Inside the Connection, an audio production of HCTC, the Hill Country's leader in telecommunications products and services. Welcome to Inside the Connection, a podcast where we take a deeper dive into the articles of our bi-monthly magazine. I'm your host, Kerry Sutton, and our guest today is Spotter Johnson from Mason, Texas. Spotter is the president of the Odeon Preservation Association, the nonprofit that owns the Odeon Theater in Mason. You can read about the theater in our September-October 2021 Connection magazine. With most of our news articles, there is always more to the story than what we could print, and this story is no different. So thank you again for joining us today as we take a look inside the connection and we learn a little extra about the Odeon Theater. So today we're talking with Spider Johnson and he is part of the group that is bringing back to life the oldest movie theater in West Texas. Now there are some other ones that are out there that may be older, but they're not operational. This one is, we just took a tour of it. It is fantastic. So Spider, tell us about the movie theater, how you got involved, what the plans are, and just give us some history about it. Well, thank you, Carrie. I appreciate that. Um, the Odeon Theater is the oldest operating theater, continuously operating theater, in West Texas. Uh, it was started at its current location in 1928. It actually was started 10 years before that at a different location, but in its current location, 1928, it was a silent movie theater. Uh, it even still has an orchestra pit uh, below the extension on the front stage. Uh, and it operated uh, for a long time uh, under the Otto Schmidt original ownership. Um, and it served Mason County, Mason, Texas, and the region for many, many decades. In 1994... The owner at that time um, wanted to uh, turn the movie theater into uh, an antique mall. Well, certainly we have enough of those <laughs> around. Uh, the it, it, theater had fallen into some disrepair, and he was tired of showing movies and uh, wanted something different. And I became alerted to that, and... Uh, several people told me that we needed to save that that old theater, and they referred, I think, to me because they didn't want to do it. <laughs> so I got a few people together, and we formed a little nonprofit, and we bought the theater. Um, so we started having bake sales and raising local money one way or the other, uh, and to try to keep the theater open, and our little board showed up, learned how to operate the old Carbon Arc uh, projectors and uh, concessions. It was a the place was definitely not fancy. It never was fancy, but it definitely needed a lot of work. So over the years, we've eventually worked with a professional grant writer. And we received enough funding over all those years. Uh, many of it was raised locally, uh, thank goodness. People here were generous and wanted a place for the, their uh, kids to go mm -hmm. to see movies. And um, we restored the marquee and the neon, uh, did renovation indoors and actually uh, had a decent concession area uh, with uh, official men and women's restrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, worked our way back towards the stage and have made significant improvements. Uh, we have now state-of-the-art um, sound system uh, for the movies, and we have PA system for our musical concerts, state-of-the-art LED lighting system for the stage. We uh, also uh, have added an annex on the back of the theater with dressing rooms for uh, the development of community theater. So we've come a long way since 1994. 
Yeah, we, we just uh, took a tour of it, and it doesn't look like what you would expect. There, there can't be many small towns in Texas who have a theater as first class as this one is. I think we've been very fortunate. Uh, over the years, uh, the board members have been dedicated uh, people who are committed to our mission of providing uh, quality entertainment for our patrons and our visitors. And uh, uh, as a result of that commitment, uh, steadfast commitment, we have uh, uh, maintained quality and um, our people who operate the movie uh, part of the theater, our contractors, uh, are likewise committed and have done a good job. So for an isolated uh, Central Texas small town, uh, we are providing a, a valuable public service for people. Mm -hmm. And you've had some big names come through there, either in um, speaking and acting. I mean, you, you really have had quite a, um, quite a, a big group of um, just real talent. It's not, it's not just a local theater that some, some cities may have. This, these are big-name people that you can advertise and you're proud to have in your theater. Yeah, uh, Jason Williams of uh, uh, Tuna, Texas, Tuna Christmas, mm -hmm. was one of our, uh, uh, our, our programs. Uh, we've had, um, you know, Joe Ely has been here, the Flatlanders, uh, Marsha Ball, I mean, many, many Texas artists, Johnny Nicholas, uh, people that are as good as anybody in the country have, have come and performed here. Uh, Sled Cleaves. Um, who else? Uh, uh, Kix Brooks of uh, sure. Brooks and Dunn sure. fame has come here and and, uh, and performed and has done benefits. And the list goes on and on. You can right. go to our website, which is theodeontheater.com. Odeon is O D E O N. Uh, and uh, you can get some of the history there and other information. Now, you did tell me that you have a, it's not a special, but your ticket prices are actually quite low. So tell, tell us about watching a movie at the Odeon Theater. You know, if you take a family of four to uh, a big movieplex in Austin or San Antonio or Houston or any big city in the rest of the country uh, with a full complement of drinks and tickets, you might be spending close to $100. Mm -hmm. In Mason, Texas, at the Odeon Theater, our movie ticket prices are $4, and drinks are a dollar, popcorn is a dollar, <laughs> candy is a dollar. So you can get out for considerably less if you come <laughs> to the small town and the small town hospitality here in Mason, Texas. I love the story of the, the, the arc projector. Do you, will people, you think, will anybody, will some of the old theater people may understand what that is? Oh, yeah. The carbon arc projectors that we inherited were decades old, and it's like one of those searchlights. It operates with an electrical arc, or like an arc welder. It's a very, very bright light. And... Um, uh, these projectors would use that for a source of the bright light when we were showing film. And there's a rheostat uh, potentiometer, they're actually called, on the back of the, of the projector that regulates how close those burning carbon rods must be maintained to each other. Uh, it gradually draws them closer together. And the sweet spot that where they would actually go at the proper rate had burned off that regulator. So we had to constantly speed it up and slow it down the whole time we were operating those old projectors. So it was uh, volunteer, the entire uh, Odeon Theater Board of Directors time for... For uh, we were on duty for uh, uh, showing the movies and doing the concessions back then, um, so uh, it so was you, a labor of love. You don't just show up and flip the lights on and watch a movie. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. There actually is, and it was quite an education. 
you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, for, of course, Hill Country Telephone Co-op, the board of directors does not get out there and lay those telephone lines. <laughs> right. Uh, they make the decisions. <laughs> It's not true in small towns. If you're on a board of directors somewhere, you're doing the work too. <laughs> Back in the early days, um, when we were, the board was up there and we were all just hanging out having a happy time, uh, we decided to show Phantom of the Opera, the old silent movie. And we imported a keyboard player, keyboardist out of Austin that that uh, could make all the... the uh, haunted pipe organ sounds that were necessary for that movie. And he came in, and we did, uh, because speaking of ghosts and ghost stories, one of the things, we did a couple of things. You know, in the, in the movie, the big chandelier mm -hmm. that fell down on the audience at a critical scene uh, we made one out of styrofoam and and just cheap beads, <laughs> and we had it we had it hung from the top of the auditorium with a little thin thread running down, and somebody was in charge of cutting that at the, at the <laughs> proper moment. But we also created a uh, a ghost. Uh, out of a sheet and some other materials that we suspended from another um, cord uh, from the balcony. And at one of the scenes, and I've forgotten which one of the critical scenes, we would cut the cord, and, and every time we did something like that, the board members scattered everywhere would scream, <laughs> bloody murder. And this ghost would slide down over the audience and scare people. And, of course, the, uh, the styrofoam big chandelier came down, <laughs> crashing down. So, uh, so that was kind of a fun moment <laughs> back then. Um, uh, you know, the other kind of funny story is that I had related to you earlier was when we moved in, all the old seats in there were just falling apart. They were wooden fold-up seats that had been there forever. They weren't comfortable, um, and they had 10 pounds of gum under each seat, so it was, you know, for sanitary reasons alone, we had to get rid of those seats. <laughs> right. So uh, uh, we managed to do that, and uh, for a long time until we could afford to get new seating or replacement seating that would be used but better. Uh, we would just put BYOC on the marquee out front, and people would bring their own lawn chairs. Sure. And we had great participation in there. We continued to show movies and have a have a good turnout. I'd never heard of a theater where you bring your own chairs inside. But... Well, we do now have a BYOB policy when we do musical concerts. Okay. So <laughs> people do bring their own wine. But we can't sell it. But a BYOC. Okay. Yeah. BYOC. Fantastic. Well, tell us once again, there is a website where people can go learn about it or they want to donate to the foundation. Can they donate? Yes. The, uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Uh, and we do accept donations, of course. That's how we stay alive out here and a small town. We don't make money. We we uh, just whatever we make from what little we charge. We uh, just keep the doors open, so people can donate. It's tax deductible, hundred uh, percent. And you can go to our website again, theodiantheater dot com, and uh, make a donation. We're always happy to receive money. Fantastic. Well, Spider, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, we will encourage everybody to come to Mason, to the Odeon Theater. It is right on the, the town square. And if you're like, I still need an address, no, you don't. Just come. Mason, you'll see the town square. I promise you, you'll find it. It's a beautiful building. Everybody in town will know where it is. Come find it. Come see a movie. Um, just come be part of the history that's here in Mason. Thanks for joining us.
joining us today. We hope you'll join us again as we take another look inside the connection. As a side note, this podcast and all of our publications are on our website at hctc.net. Then go to resources, then to news, and there you will see a tab for newsletters and podcasts. One final thought is this podcast should not be copied, distributed, published, or reproduced, either in a whole or in part, without the express written consent of HCTC. Any inquiries relating to the podcast should be directed to the Manager of Community Relations at podcast at hctc.net. Thank you so much.